Welcome, Christian Assembly, and all those that are tuned in, those that are on Facebook Live tonight, and uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to have it on YouTube, and uh, everyone want to watch it in the morning, too. And last week we had a few little glitches there, and, and we apologize for it being so late, but uh, you, know, you know how technology is. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it don't. But, uh, but we got it going, and, and uh, we was able to get it up there, so praise the Lord. It's great to be here tonight. Great to have y'all here with us and uh, tune in. Y'all ready to worship the Lord tonight? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. You know, there ain't no rock. Gonna cry in my place. Gonna cry in my place. No. No. Well, let's talk about let's that. Sing. Let's <laughs> sing some about it, too. Here we go. <laughs> ain't no rock. Gonna cry in my place as long as I'm alive. I glorify His holy name. Ain't no rock gonna cry in my place as long as I'm alive. I glorify His holy name. Everybody praises the holy name as long as I'm alive. I glorify His holy name. Everybody praises the holy name. Long as I'm alive, I glorify His holy name. Ain't no bird gonna flap his feathers. Long as I'm alive, I glorify His holy name. Ain't no bird gonna flap his feathers. Long as I'm alive, I glorify His holy name. Everybody praise His holy name. Long as I'm alive, I glorify His holy name. Father, we love you so much. And tonight, there's no rock that's going to cry in our place, Lord, because we're going to praise you tonight. Father, we praise you with all of our hearts. We praise you, Father God, because you are God. You are worthy of our praise. Holy Spirit, have your way in this service tonight. Holy Spirit, touch every heart that's struggling. Touch every heart, Father God, that needs encouragement. Touch every heart, Father God, that needs a miracle tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Yes. Lord God, have your way. We thank you for the privilege to be in your house, to serve and worship you. And we know that you have greater things in store for this day. Lord, we're seeing so many things around us, Father God, that could worry us, Father God, and have us so concerned 
Father God, that we're just full of anxiety and full of stress. But Lord, we give all that to you because, Lord, you are above all that. Yes. And you're greater than all that and much Thank more you. powerful than all that. Praise you. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. How many of you know he's coming again? Yes. yes. Jesus yes. is coming again. Thank you, Jesus. Coming on the clouds. King of kings. Yes. Lord of lords. Amen. Yes.
Amen. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'd rather bow now while I have a choice than to wait and stand before the King of Kings and be made to bow and hear him say, depart from me. I wouldn't want to be in that position. And I hope you are not in that position. If you are, Jesus is our Savior. He is our Lord. He's our Christ. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You know, he died on the cross for all of our sins when he didn't have to. He made that choice to die for you and for me. He is the king of my heart.
When the night is holding on to me, God is holding on. Cause you are a good, good. God is good. That's right. Hallelujah. You know, he promised right. to take us through the storms. Right. He didn't promise there wouldn't be any storms. But our God is so good that he promised that he would take us through the storm. Right. You know, sometimes we need to be carried. You know, there's many a times I can look back in my life and know that I wasn't walking, but God was carrying me. Amen. You know, right. and I needed him to carry me. He is so good, so good, and you know he's here, right here among us. Our Father's with us. He inhabits our praises. He's right there where you are. May it be your living room, whether you're in your kitchen, you might be in your bedroom, you might be listening to this outside. Right where you are, God is there inhabiting your praises. He's inhabiting our praises for the King.
Yes, you know, sometimes it's just, you need Jesus. You feel, you get that feeling and you just need Jesus. We all get there. We all get in those times, you know. And he's always there. Just the mention of his name. Jesus. He calms everything. He makes our spirit calm. He brings peace to us. In a time when there's no peace. In a time when everyone is just in an uproar. Jesus brings peace. His spirit is among us and brings us that peace. Jesus. I need you. Do you need him today? Amen. Let's praise him.
Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yes. Never has there been a time in history, Lord, that we need you more than now. Yes. Lord, we thank you that you care enough, that you love us so much to be with us today. Father, we thank you for the privilege to stand in your presence. Come and have your way. In Jesus' name, we love you. Amen and amen. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lord. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. God is good. Amen. Amen. Along for the day when we can echo that the whole crowd folks at the same time. Amen. 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 And uh, I'm tell you, that is coming soon. Yes. Soon and very uh, soon. Soon and very soon. They're about to lift this thing up. And uh, if you can put my mic on, that would be Hallelujah. And we're going to be able to be back in church again, again, all together. Amen. To worship in the Lord. Amen. As a corporate body together. I know we are. You're out there. You're worshiping. I know you're worshiping. You let us know that you are. Amen. But I'm long, I long to see your face and hear your voice. Amen. <laughs> we happened to take a ride and saw Sister Alice working in her garden yesterday. Amen. Where else would she be? And uh, <laughs> she gave us some bell peppers and a fern plant. And uh, she's just always busy, and she's just out there. That's, that's how she worships God, too. You know, find your own way to spend time with God. You know, I tell you what, this thing is definitely drawing people closer to Christ because we're finding our own personal time more with God than before. Do you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord? Amen. God is certainly good all the time. God has, uh, this message tonight started off as a devotion, and it just kept growing. And uh, and it's the message tonight, Amen. And I'm. It's going to be a little bit, probably a little bit different. Uh, I've never preached about this before, Amen. So it's going to be new for me as well as it is for you. Because tonight I'm going to preach to you about hair. Hair. How ironic! I would preach a message about hair, something I know so little about now. Amen. Not before. I used to have more hair than Brother Dave, but that was a long time ago. Amen. I, I think that's before they invented baldness, and uh, but now that they have, I'm there. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. If you have your Bibles, open up to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, and that's where we're going to start today. And, uh, you know, the Lord is in this chapter encouraging his disciples and letting them know that in this life, that they, after he's gone, they would face persecutions, and they would face different things, and he's encouraging them. And at the same time, he's letting his disciples know how important to him that they are to him, and how much that his disciples mean to him. You know, we never uh, talk too much about Jesus getting emotional when he talks to his disciples, but I think he was getting a little emotional in this scripture. Amen. Because he's talking about the persecutions and, and the things to be aware of and the things to be wary of. And then he stops right in the middle and he's and he and he goes to and we're going to pick up in verse 29. And he begins to talk about some sentiments to his disciples. Uh, verse 29 of Matthew chapter 10 says this. Jesus begins to say, what is the price of two sparrows? One copper coin. But not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. Verse 30, he says, and the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid, verse 31 says, you are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Amen. He's beginning to express himself to his disciples. He's encouraging them, but I believe he's getting just a little bit heartfelt emotions to them because he's attached to them. How do you know that Jesus is attached to you and attached to me? He's attached to us. He loves us that way. Jesus is an emotional being. Amen. God is emotional. The Holy Spirit is emotional. The Bible talks about grieving the Holy Spirit. If we can grieve the Holy Spirit, we can make him feel good things toward us too. Amen. Tonight I want to talk to you about our great hairdresser, God. Just as God is the vine dresser, amen, we're going to see how he is also the great hairdresser who knows just how to fix your hair to suit your life. This might sound kind of comical, but it's not really as we begin to get into the message, we'll begin all begin to see 
what God is saying. In this passage of Scripture, the Lord is speaking to his disciples, and as he's telling them what to be wary of and, and to be cautious of, and the persecutions they would face, and, the, and, the, and in facing false prophets and whatever, uh, in this passage of Scripture, the Lord is speaking also of his providence for his disciples. Who are his disciples today? We are. If you've been born again, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, <coughs> excuse me, then you are a disciple of Christ. So he's talking to us today about providence that he makes for us, especially when faced with great opposition or persecution in this life. Look, we all know by now that you will face persecutions and you will face oppositions in this life. The whole world right now knows that very well. This time right here, he is using sparrows as his example of how valuable we are to him. And right in the middle of, of explaining about the sparrows and how valuable we are to him, he begins to say, and the very hairs of your head are all numbered. That would probably be a strange thing to us, and it was when I read it, but you know, they actually knew what he was talking about when he began to say that. Too often we read and acknowledge this verse, verse 30, but God has put this scripture on our heart today to take a deeper look at its meaning and to share it with us and to open our hearts and to receive this message about the hairdresser. Today, I'm going to preach to you about your hair and how God sees your hair or doesn't see your hair. And we're going to see how differently <laughs> that he sees our hair how many of you ever give any thought after you leave today, after you leave the mirror and you go to work, you look at your hair and you work? Well, some of you ladies might be that. I used to be like that. I used to carry a comb in my back pocket. The comb was bigger than my pants. A man bigger than the pocket. And you take the thing, just comb it. And I had it with me all the time because I was worried about my, what my hair looked like. Right, Brother Kenny? He can, he can relate to that. Amen. Hair today, gone tomorrow. Amen. Uh, <laughs> but verse 30 I want to focus on that. It says, and the very hairs of your head are all numbered. This is a proverbial expression showing the perfect knowledge God has and how exquisitely he takes care of his disciples, all of his creatures, but especially his disciples, particularly those who are Christian. How many of you know the Lord takes care of everyone, but when we belong to Christ through salvation, he pays special attention to his disciples, to his followers, amen, and to his faithful ministers. He says that as a sparrow falls, not one falls to the ground without his knowledge. So also, not a single hair of a, of a man's hair or a woman's hair as being a disciple of Christ falls to the ground without the knowledge and will of God. As the Lord applies this particularly to his disciples, his sense about it is this that they had no reason to be afraid of men. Can you say amen? Or to fear anything. Listen, today we have no reason to fear the COVID virus. No reason, because we belong to Christ. Even if you get it, we have no reason to fear. I know people that have had it. Amen. You know people that have had it, and they have recovered. Amen. You know people that are going through it, and they're recovering. Those who put their trust in Christ, even if they have it, still have a certain joy about them and a certain assurance that God is providing for me. Whatever befalls us, the Lord is there. For the value of the sparrows, the value of the disciples, are valuable to Jesus. The lives are valuable unto Jesus, under the special and peculiar care of his divine providence. And he cares not just for the sparrows, but even the more minute parts. He didn't just care for us as a whole. The Lord looks at us as a whole, but he also breaks us down <laughs> and looks at us, every part of us. The Bible says the Lord is a searcher of the heart. The Lord just didn't look at the outside of us and judge us from that, but he also looks at the heart and checks our motive. How many of you know that even if you sin, God checks your motive? Not that it makes it good and okay to sin, but if there's a certain motive that comes to sin. And, and as we sin, the Lord even checks our motive even in that. Even when we do good stuff, he checks our motive. He checks why. He looks into our heart, not just on parts of us, but he looks at all of us, but every part. Amen? Even the more minute parts, such as the hair, <clears throat> excuse me, which were no of great account to the disciples, the hairs of their head, but all of them 
were not only known, but numbered, speaking of the hairs now. The Lord numbered your hair. Every strand. Listen, we're going to talk about the particular love of Jesus, <laughs> and probably quite peculiar, because I've never really studied this out before until now, and it helped me to understand how much God really loves me. He's a big God, but he is not watching from a distance. He's watching up close. There's a song that says he's as close as the mention of his name. I think it's he's, he's living even a little bit closer than that. Amen? Even a little bit closer than that. All of the hairs of our head are not only known by him, but numbered. This was actually a doctrine that was not unfamiliar with the Jews. That the events of man and accidents which come upon him are all by and in the hands of God. And that nothing is by chance, but all things are by God's design. All things. Say that with me. All things are by God's design. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. Each one has the care and the attention of God. And God has fixed the number. And though a, sm uh, though a small importance to most, God does not think it beneath him to determine how few or how many they shall be. He will therefore take care of us even in the smallest details of our life. The Lord has not left us in this COVID virus. He's ever more near to us, I believe, than ever before. Amen. I really believe that. The Lord hasn't abandoned anyone. But listen, all things are not by chance. All things happen under the ordination of God. I keep hearing people saying, well, God didn't cause that. Even if he did not, he still ordained it. Let it sink into your head. Let it sink into your head. God has a purpose and a plan for everything that he does even to the smallest details of our life. And just as a side note, when something is numbered, it is marked with a number to typically indicate position in a series. Ever notice that some of your hair lays straight and then some of it is curly and wavy? Now, some of you probably cause that with the curling on. Some people, it's all natural. Amen? How many of you have an all natural dude going on? Amen? And some of them are... Or split perfectly down the middle. Amen. And some of them are gone and just all kind of just hang out together somewhere. Amen. But every hair, each and every hair has its assigned placement to work together to give you your desired hairstyle. How many of you said you're having a bad hair day? What does that mean? Because the hairs are not cooperating. Amen. My wife spends time spends time on her hair. And then she'll take her time and she'll do her thing. And all of a sudden it starts raining. And she grabs this big beach umbrella. Amen. And she, and she goes, she covers herself. Because why? She doesn't want to have a bad hair day. Why doesn't she want to have a bad hair day? Because if you have a bad hair day, it looks what? Bad. And you're thinking, my God, I can't go around with bad hair. Who wants to go around with bad hair? Like you just got out of that bed look. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to go around looking like that. But we get bad hair days sometimes. And the Lord notices even when you have a bad hair day. You love the Lord. But it's okay to have a bad hair day. Did you know that? Because every hair of your head are numbered. Nothing is by chance. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he has each one in its place where it belongs to perform its own assignment. Whether it be your bangs or whether it hangs low in the back or whatever else, et cetera, et cetera, it has its own assignment. I told you it's going to be a weird sermon tonight. Amen. But it works together for a good hairdo. If we love God, it all works together. All hairs work together for our good for those who love God and are the called of God. All your hairs work together and gives you a good hairdo. Amen. You love the Lord. One of the great preachers of the 1800s named Charles Spurgeon, I'm sure you've heard of him before, preached a message <clears throat> excuse me, on this one scripture, Matthew 10.30. So I'll share with you some of the things he said. He points out how Jesus in this scripture of Matthew 10.30 is expressing his love to his disciples and encouraging them through their fears. And he gives them the parable of the sparrows 
to let them know how important he, that, they, that they are to Jesus, but then he gives them the, 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 the parable of the hairs of the head, the, the expression, to let them know just how much that he cares even about the hairs in your head and that he's numbered them. Jesus is speaking to them as the great comforter. In addressing the hairs of our heads being numbered, Spurgeon says that this verse seems to have four views of this meaning. First, it means full ordination, meaning not being in the present tense. The very hairs of your head have all been numbered before the worlds were created. God cared about your hair even before the world was formed. Back in Jeremiah 29, 11, when the Lord says, I know the plans I have for you, he also included your hair in the plan. Can you say amen? The Lord was concerned about my hair. Thank you, Jesus. God is, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1 real quick. And we're going to read a few verses on that foreordination. about how before the worlds were formed, God knew who you were and who I was. Are you there? Verse 3 of Ephesians chapter 1 says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Why does God bless us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing? Because we are united with Christ. Listen, we have great benefit of being united with Christ. We do not have any benefit of being united with religion or to be united with the world. To be united with Christ is where we should strive to be every day of our lives. Verse 4 says, Even before the world was made, or even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us. He loved us before he even knew us. He knew us. That's how he loved us. And chose us in Christ to be holy without fault in his eyes. Listen, I know that he is talking about a particular group of people, but I also believe that he's talking about particularly individual groups. And that synopsis, I guess, each one of us could be a hair. <laughs> Placed on a certain part of the head to perform a certain function. Amen? And we are all numbered. Praise God. God is paying attention. Verse 5, God decided in advance, say in advance, to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. You give God great pleasure. You are not a mistake. You are not a failure. Amen. You have a, a, a negative side, but don't focus on that. God loves you, and you're great. You, we all bring pleasure to the Lord. Verse 6 says, so we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. Verse 7, he, he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. And when did he do this? Before the foundations of the earth were even formed. Before then. How long ago was that? Before Genesis. Secondly, Spurgeon says, it's very clear that God so knows his people that the very hairs of the head are all numbered specifically by him. Thirdly, that God set such a high estimate upon his servants that of them, he says, the very hairs of your head are numbered, meaning that you are so precious to God that the least portion of you is precious to him. The very least portion of you. We're not going to get specific with that. But there are these portions of bodily and in our minds and in our spirit and our soul. Even the least portions mean that much to Christ. How much did it mean, Pastor Troy? John 3, 16 and 17 meant that much. Fourthly, it mentions preservation. That there is not a hair of your head that shall perish that God does not know about it. In the physical, that means if your hair falls out, the Lord pays attention. He knows what number it was. We don't pay attention to it, but he does. God is ever paying attention. Even when we don't realize he's near us and close to us that close, he knows. According to scripture, he does. Amen. But he also means that when the least of yourself is in turmoil, he knows. 
Whatever least it is, even if it's the least of a trouble, he knows. You love the Lord. And speaking of full ordination, Spurgeon also addresses God's providence in this scripture. And once again, speaking of the hairs of her head all being numbers, he said, most Christian people believe in the providence of God, but all Christian people are not prepared to follow out the truth which that involves. He says they appear to believe that there is a providence overruling, but they seem to have forgotten that there was always such a providence. And that providence must be, after all, a matter of divine foresight. He goes on to say, God must have foreseen or he could not have already provided. For the word providence is, after all, Latin for foresight. So that provision, the provision that God makes is but the result of his vision beforehand as the things which were needful to us. Amen. God knew what you needed today way back when. He knew where we would be. He's not surprised by the virus. He's not surprised by anything. And he has already provided even before this day God here. God has already made provision for grace. God has already made provision for the needs. God's already made provision for healing. He's already made provision for miracles. He's already made provision. Even when your kids are not acting right or your spouse is not acting right or grandparents, whatever, God has already made provision for salvation. Even before we got crazy, he knew. <laughs> the Lord is not surprised by any of it because beforehand he knew. He already has provided. He's already numbered our hairs. God is good. And all the time, God is good. He goes on to say, that God's foresight extends to the whole entire man, meaning mankind, also woman, in every aspect of our lives. He knew all about us even before the foundations of the earth was established. God long ago knew, ordained, when, where we should be born and when. I was born in Abbeville, Louisiana. Anybody know what that is? Abbeville. It's out west. Amen. Me and Sister Missy would take a ride there one day. I had never been back there, except but one time since I'd been born. And uh, it was pretty much like any other place. <laughs> but, you know, that's where I was born. All my, all my brothers and sisters were born in Lake Charles. And, and then we moved here. I thought I was not belonging to the same family. I thought they, I was either adopted, because I was bigger than everybody in my family, <laughs> was better looking, and had hair. Help me, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Amen. But God ordained where we should be born. That's one hair. When we should be born, that's another hair. Who our parents should be, that's two more hairs. And decided our lives from infancy to adulthood, these are many more hairs that were all numbered, all according to his divine purpose. And by his will ordained all that concerns us, even the very hairs of our head. And I think at some points he means it literally. He cares that much and he's that close. Listen, I also notice this and it's be kinda I kinda giggled at this because you know we're caging down here and some people think hairs is the proper term. Uh, Sister Jamie, I heard her say, but I had to you know I had to go fix my hairs. I said, Well, how many of them? She said, Well, all my hairs. Amen. So I realize as I'm studying this, he speaks the word hairs as each one singularly and not hair as plural. We address our hair as hair, uh, un unless you're from down the bayou. Uh, that's because God is concerned about each and every hair, not just as a whole. Each and everything in our lives. He is particular about our lives, each and every part. So don't think you are praying about 
are concerned about anything that is too small in your life. I've heard people say this over and over again. I didn't pray about it because I didn't think it was important enough to come to Jesus with it. Listen, I'm tell you something. Everything. The Bible says pray about everything and be concerned or have anxiety over nothing. Don't worry about nothing. And the truth is, the Bible also says it's the little foxes that spoil the vines. If that's true, then the devil is keeping us from praying about the smaller things. Because if you have a grouping of smaller things that comes against you, it turns to one big thing, and that's what the devil wants you to do. And because he wants you to do that, he, you know, he, he creates this aura of guilt complexes and, and low self-esteem because we think that we're so silly to worry about the little things. Pray about the little things. Pray about everything. Be concerned even about the little things. And as it comes up, and give it to Jesus so that the devil has no foothold. Because Satan's plight is to bring condemnation so that you'll just just ditch your faith and not trust God anymore. And once that happens, he's kind of got you. Don't ever feel silly about praying something too small. One time I was, one time we were in our house, one, where we've been living many places, but the hot water heater wasn't working. And I, was, I laid my hands in the hot water heater and I said, Lord, you said providence is mine. Including this, I need to go to work and I want to take a hot shower. Please, please, Jesus. You know that water got hot? I'm telling you. Did God do it? Absolutely. If he can be the hairdresser and the vine dresser, he can be the plumber. He can be the plumber. Amen. If he can be all those things, he can do all those things. He's concerned about our lives. He is particular about our lives. Don't feel bad that you're bothering God with what you feel might be trivial. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nothing is too insignificant to God when it comes to us. Listen, he ordains, he plans for, and provides for all areas in our lives. This should change our faith, our prayers, to the point where how much we know that God truly loves us and how much he's ready to answer our prayer, how much he's listening, and how much he cares. Jeremiah 29, 11, we could all probably quote it. Amen. In the easy-to-read version, which was one of my favorite versions, easy to read, God says, I know the plans I have for you. I have good plans for you. I don't plan to hurt you. I plan to give you hope and a good future. Amen. <clears throat> How does God know the plans that he has for us? Because he made the plans. While he was planning the world, before he even made the dirt, God was planning and giving you hair. And he said, and he began to number them even way back then. He was planning great things, even in the small details of your life, divine foresight, divine providence. And I notice he kept saying in this scripture, kept stacking out to me. He says, I know the plans I have for you. I have good plans for you. I don't plan to hurt you. I plan to give you hope and a good future. But a lot of times we kind of interfere with that. And that's where we begin to split hairs. <laughs> Amen. And sometimes we, we try to hide it, hide the hairs that God gave us with, with wigs and, and things that, that, that kind of falsify <laughs> what is not real when it comes to God and the plans he has for us. And we begin to try to alter those plans. I was praying the other day, and I began to, to, to ask, you know, just talk to the Lord. I began to put my needs out there. Then I stopped and I said, God, what are your plans? What are your plans for my life? What are your plans for my family? What are your plans for Christian assembly? Whatever they are, that's what I want. That's what I want. I want to have the hair that God made for me. Amen. When I get to heaven, I'm going to have a whole new head full. But I want to have every detailed plan that God has. You know, the Bible tells us the Lord laughs at our plans. Amen. Because, you know, that's not the plans that he made. If he is God at all, he has to be God overall. You love the Lord. Now, we all know that as life progresses, what happens? Hairs fall out. Or they have been pulled out. Or they've been dyed and fried and laid to the side. <laughs> Amen. Or they die naturally. Listen, the hairs get pulled out when? When we brush or comb out the knots. Hmm? Amen. We brush or comb out the knots. That's, that's kind of leading me to another part of the message I didn't think about. The knots. We comb out the knots. Well, 
what we think knots should be there, we begin to comb it out. And instead of leaving the knots up to God, like the thou shalt knots up to him, and trust him in that, hmm, that's good, God, thank you. Now that's fresh from heaven. We begin to brush and comb out the knots. And we, and we do that because we don't think the hair looks right. Huh. So because of our brushing, the hair gets pulled out. You know, sometimes we can uproot some things that God has planned for us by trying to take matters into our own hands. God loves the way you look before the brush even hits it. Amen. We begin to take matters into our own hands and we begin to get frustrated and begin trying to get out the tangles. When the hairs get a little tangled, we want to get that out of there. And God says, no, I'm the hairdresser. Let me take care of it. Even the smaller things, let me take care of it. How easy is that to do? That is not easy to do. Because that means you show up to work with a head of hair like this. Amen. Yeah, I've seen people. <laughs> I'd like to have it. You know, whew, but I don't want a bush when I get to heaven. Just kind of out there. And some people show up at, at the hospitals, the worst places, for people just putting their hair up and going right to work. It's, and they allow it. <laughs> just, it's just everywhere. And people just, but you know what? They don't worry about the hair. And they just kind of go to work. And, but, and they kind of just leave it to whatever. But, you know, God is not saying don't brush your hair. But spiritually speaking, he says, leave that to me. Leave that to me. If it gets tangled, I'll untangle it. I'll pass the brush. I will fix it up. I will make it look the way it's supposed to because he knows the plans that he has for us. God's divine providence brought by his foresight. The, even the small details of your life. Hairs get pulled out. Naturally, we understand Go brush your hair. But spiritually, go natural. <laughs> Stop trying to brush out the hairs of your life that seem to be tangled and knotted. Because when you're busy trying to get the knots out, you may be damaging good hairs. You know, the Bible talks about in, in, the, in the, tear, the tears being in the church. He says, but don't go pull them up. Because if you pull up the tears, then you might pull up some good wheat. That means leave it up to him. He'll take care of it. He's the husbandman. He is the gardener. He is the one who takes care of all that. Whatever is troubling us and we have some tears and we have some knots in our life, let God handle the knots. When things are not going good, when things are not happy, when things are not well, when things are not, God will take care of all of those things. Don't go pulling them up. Let God do that. Let him dress your house. Let him dress what's what. Leave the grooming to God. Because you know what? The, even the knots that, God, that, that are there are ordained by God that need to stay numbered in their assigned position and purpose. Some of us just plow through with a razor, giving a clear field for more to grow, but be sure God was finished before you shave it away. You love the Lord. I'm about to close. Sister Debbie, if you don't mind, if you can come up here. Each hair of your head is numbered has an assignment and purpose. Each detail of your life has a design purpose. Trust God with each one. Pray about every detail. Submit every detail to, to the honor and glory of God. And he will cause each hair to grow and flourish. And that's where God is glorified because the glory of a woman is her hair. The Bible tells us that. I believe the woman it talks about there is the woman being the church, the bride, that her glory is her hair. Every minute, every detail, every minute detail, every smallest part, every particle of your life that makes up you is for the glory of God. In closing, and going back to the passages of, of, of Matthew chapter 10, Jesus is encouraging his disciples how important they are to him in the midst of persecution and in whatever we face. You and I are more important to him than many sparrows. And every hair of our head, he loves, he pays attention to even the smallest things, the smallest hurts, the smallest pains, the smallest problems or difficulty, the smallest hope. He pays attention to the smallest dreams, the smallest fears. The smallest thing we do for him, he pays attention to. The smallest prayers we pray, he hears. The smallest act of love we give to another, he sees. 
The smallest tear that we cry, He dries. When we send Him the smallest praise that we sing, nothing escapes His eye. Nothing He turns away. Nothing He disregards. He loves you to the smallest particle of your being. He loves us that much. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the persecutions that may come your way. Don't be afraid of the things that you might be facing today. Don't be afraid, even if they're big, they're small in the presence of God. But you know what? Even the smallest things are big to the heart of God. He loves us. Let's not be afraid of this COVID virus. Don't be afraid of what you might hear. God is with us. He cares for us. Let us turn to him and let him fix our hair. Let him fix the details of our lives. Let him worry about where money is going to come from. (laughs) Let him be concerned. Let him care for every hair in your life that has fallen. To have faith in God and trust him as the hairdresser today. God has a plan for your life and for my life. And he planned everything before the earth was even created. That is hard for us to comprehend. But he saw where we would be today in this experience that we call COVID-19. He knew where we would be He knew what would be happening even before it came. But you know what? He also knew and he also provided blessings for his disciples. He provided grace. He provided everything that we would need. And we are blessed. In the midst of the darkness, we have a light. His name is Jesus. Out there today, if you're not saved and if you haven't given your heart to Jesus, Consider accepting Him as your Lord and Savior today. Because He created all of us. We get saved and we accept Jesus as our Master and Lord of our lives. He's the Savior of all. He knew where you would be today. And He knows what you need. Receive Jesus into your heart. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins and to come into your life. And surrender everything to him, even the smallest things of your life. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. Church, let us look to God and not be afraid. But let us shine today. This is our hour that the Lord is causing us to rise up and to bring him glory. Let us do so with a fervor and with a faith that will not quit. Let us look to Christ. If you have a need today, no matter how small it is, give it to Jesus. He'll take care of it. God bless all of you. We're going to start meeting again soon. I don't believe it's going to be very much longer that we'll have to stay away from our church buildings. And we're going to come together once again in celebration. And it's going to be big celebration and thanksgiving to our Lord. Until then, we love you all. If anybody has a need out there, you know how to reach us. We love you. God bless. Bye-bye.